In this video, we'll start doing a color correction that focuses on our female talent. And we're also going to look at a way to refine our mats with a very powerful tool called the Pixel Spread Tool. Let's go down to our effects nodes once again. I want to get a color correction tool for the woman. I'm going to use the color correct tool. So I'll drag that into the schematic. I'll take the main output of my master keyer, feed it into the main input, the red input for the color correction tool. And I want the woman's matte edge to go into the matte input for the color correction. So this color correction is going to only affect the woman in the scene. So with this color correction tool, you get a color wheel. You can work on your master, your shadow, your midtones, your highlights. You got the hue, saturation, gain. There's your gamma, gain, offset, contrast, histogram, curves, range. Again, lots of controls within inside one tool. I'll just start to drag to the right to adjust this and keep it an eye on this. We can also zoom in or pan over just to look at the, the woman's hair. I can click in the field and enter a value of 113 for the exact amount that I want. And then I want to darken this, so I'm going to go to my gamma control for RGB. And I'll start dragging this to the left to darken the hair. I'll bring it to about 0.72, maybe 74. And then lastly, I'm going to come over to my histogram. I'll take the highlight and I'm going to drag it right to the edge of the peak. I'll hit the fit button to bring this back to fit in my viewer. And then again, I can turn bypass on and off so you can see the adjustment that we made. And you'll also notice that it's obviously not affecting the guy because we're using the result of the matte edge to control what pixels are being affected by this color correction. Also notice inside the schematic, when you enable bypass, you'll see that the output turns red and it, it actually reads bypass. So you know that tool is being bypassed. This is obviously very handy, especially when you have a complex schematic, a complex flow, and you want to know if there's a tool that's bypassed or not. Well, it's easy to know it because it's going to show you right inside of the schematic. With the schematic selected, I'll hit the fit button, which will fit all of my nodes into the view. Let me turn off that bypass and let's just name the CC girl. All right, so now we've got our color correction that's affecting the guy. We've got our color correction that's affecting the girl. Actually, I'm going to zoom back a little more in the viewport and move it around. Now I'm just going to arrange my nodes a little bit to have the color warper for the guy with the matte edge over here. I'll bring the color correction for the girl down here so I can organize these like so. Now there's a great tool for really finessing and warping the edge of your mat. Well, actually what you're doing is warping the color information past the edge of your mat. And that's called the pixel spread tool. What I mean by that is I want to take the end result of my color warper and I want to warp it and push it past the edge of my mat edge end result. So I'll go down to my effects nodes. I'm going to hit the P key. There's my pixel spread. I'll drag this out. And once again, we're going to perform a pixel spread focused on the guy and a pixel spread focused on the girl, mainly because they are very different mats again. Let me actually zoom back in here so we can see this. The pixel spread tool actually has four different inputs. It has the main input red, the green background, the blue mat, and also a vector input if you're using motion vectors. We're not going to, but I'm just pointing it out to you. What we want to do is take the color correction result, feed that into the main input of the pixel spread tool, take the matte edge result, feed that into the matte input of the pixel spread tool. I want to zoom in on the talent, our guy here, so you can really understand what is happening with the parameters that I'm going to adjust with my pixel spread. If you're not seeing the parameters, double click on your tool or discard your FX nodes. We're going to leave our spread type to parallax. That's what I want. And in the spread mode, you have two options. It could be expansion or contraction. And you'll notice that the parallax amount is set to one by default. So even with this minor adjustment, looking at the edge of the guy, as I toggle between expansion and contraction, you can see what is happening. We're either going to expand the color information at the edge of the mat or contract that color information. If I go drastic with the adjustment for the amount, you can really see what we're doing. So I'm pushing that edge way past the edge of the mat. Or if I choose contraction, we are contracting the edge of color into the mat. I'll set it back to expansion. Obviously, I really don't want the expansion to be 18. So let's go and set this to a value of 2 for our guy. 
And now if I turn bypass on and off, you can see we've expanded our color information just a couple pixels past the edge of the mat. All right, let's do the same thing for our woman. I'm going to right click, choose copy, right click, choose paste, move over here. Let's feed our color correction for our woman into the main red input, the mat edge result output into the main mat input for our pixel spread. And then in the viewport, let's zoom back out a little bit and then pan over to see the woman. In fact, I'll zoom back even a little more so we see all of it. Now for the woman, I'm gonna be really drastic with this parallax amount. The reason being is the mat is really soft and I wanna make sure the color of her hair is pushed pretty far into that softness. So I'm gonna set this value to 200. And you can see what I've done. I've really just manipulated and it warped, if you will, the edge color past the mat. I'll click the fit button once again to get my image to fit in the viewport. And we'll zoom back a little bit in our schematic. And for organization, we're going to rename these. So I'm just going to go underscore girl and select this pixel spread underscore guy. All right. Now, if I want to organize and move my nodes around, I could hold control and click and drag and region select certain nodes, control and drag select these nodes and move them around. But there's also the compass, which is a great feature for not only organizing and controlling multiple nodes, positions, and so on, it's also great visually to know exactly what each part of your schematic is affecting. So for example, I've got these three nodes that are affecting the guy, these three nodes that are affecting the girl. If I go over to my tools, you'll see the draw compass tool. You can also hit the C key to access this tool. But once I have the draw compass tool activated, I can come into my schematic and just click and drag a region, select the nodes I want to be part of this compass and I release it. Now I can go in and name this girl. I still have the draw compass tool activated so I can region select over these nodes just like I did there. And I'll name this one guy. All right, now keep in mind, your draw compass tool is still active right now. So don't accidentally start to grab something to try to move it because you'll be drawing another compass. So make sure you hit the M key to go back to your select tool. But now I can grab the top of the compass and I can move all these nodes around any way I want. If I get rid of my effects nodes while a compass is selected, you're gonna see the parameters for your compass down below. You can control the priority of it. You can also control the color by clicking on the color pot for the individual compass. So for example, maybe I want the girl compass to be red. So I choose that. I'll select the guy compass and click on its color pot and I'll choose a nice dark blue and choose OK. You can also rename the compass by clicking in the field, but I'm going to leave that name guy. And as I mentioned, you have the priority editor here that allows you to control the hierarchy of the compasses. Now, why is that important? Now, the way the compass works is, of course, I click on the top of it, I can manipulate and move it around. If I want to access a tool in there, I select that tool and I can access each one of its parameters. But if I take a tool and I drag it just outside of the compass, it is no longer part of that compass. It has to be 100% inside and then it is part of the compass. Going back to the hierarchy settings, these two are not overlapping, so there is no issue with it. But if I go back to my tools and I choose draw compass and I make a compass that's going to encompass both of those nodes. Let's just name this all for right now. We're going to delete this in a second. Hit the M key to go back to my select tool. Now, if I move this around, that is not affecting the tools or the compass underneath it. That's because it's on top of the other two compasses. If I choose down twice, I just put my all compass underneath the other two. And now as I manipulate the all compass, it's going to control the position for the other two compasses and all the tools that are within it. Now, if I took this compass and I dragged this to the bottom and throw it away, I would be deleting everything. I don't want to do that. And if I try to delete this compass by right clicking and choosing delete, it will delete everything. Obviously we don't want that control Z to undo that. So what I'll need to do is go back to my node, select my all and choose up twice to bring it above the other compasses. And now I click away first to unselect everything. Now I can pick up that compass and I can drag it to the bottom of the UI and I can get rid of it. So now I have one compass for the guy, one compass for the girl. All right, let's comp these pieces together now. So to do that, I'm gonna hit the C key over my tools inside my bin. I'll drag the comp tool out. 
Let me adjust my schematic and zoom in a little bit. So the comp node has a main input, the front, a background green input, and two matte inputs. So what we're going to do is take the pixel spread for the guy, feed it into the red front input for the comp. I'll take the pixel spread for the girl, feed that into the green input for the comp, take the matte output for the guy, put it in the first matte input, which is for the front, then take the matte output for the girl and feed that into the secondary matte, which is for the background. Now, if you look in our view, we've just comped them back together with all the color correction and matte work that we've done. I'll double click on the comp node to get its parameters. Looking in the schematic view under its name, Comp84, you can see it's telling me already the blend type that is set to, which is blend. That's what we're going to want to leave it at, but I just wanted to point out that the comp node's already displaying what the blend mode is. I'll zoom back in our schematic a little bit just to see what we've got going on here. We can organize these any way we want. So that's going to complete this video for right now. The next video, we're going to start working on our background, which is going to be created in the 3D compositing tool named Action.